Hi, welcome to the part one of this video series. Here we will look at AZ104 as your administrator associate real exam questions. Just like most of my videos, please focus on the concepts. Do not try to mug the answers. Please subscribe to my channel to be tuned to get similar contents which will help you with the certification process. So this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications, primarily AWS and Azure related certifications. If you visit the playlist on this channel, you will see so many cloud certification related contents, AZ304, 303, DP300, AI900, DP900, AWS Solution Architect, W Desktop Specialist, AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification. These are all having real exam questions. Now the general impression is the admin certification is not required for my role and it is pretty tough to understand. That's a myth. If you are doing cloud architect work, you need to know this for understanding the big picture and understand how the end-to-end -end component will be implemented. If you are team leads, you will need that implementation knowledge and hands-on experience to help your team with the troubleshooting process and guidance. And developers, definitely, if you are on a data track, you should clear this certification. The DevOps people may not need this to that extent, but if you are on a data track, you should. As any developer, maybe on the data analytics or DevOps, you need to know how AD, RPAC, and governance works. You need to know how you can make these storages secured. As a data guy, you need to understand how you can import and export data or copy the data across from the storage accounts to various Azure applications. And lifecycle management is a key, which most of the developers as well as admins will require for their day-to-day -day activities. This will help them save the cost for the storage by putting their files or objects into a life cycle. The myth that this is a very tough certification is not correct. Go through my videos that I will be uploading in the next few days as well. It will explain a lot of concepts which will help you clear the certification exam. Let's jump into the questions. Let's look at the first question of this series. Uh, you may pause this video to read it carefully. The story of this question goes this way. You have two VMs, serve one and serve two. Serve one has an application and serve two has services. The application on serve one will access the service on serve two through IP addresses. Now let us understand what are you supposed to do. You need to put serve one and serve two on Azure cloud in a single subnet and Azure virtual network. Now what is it that you are supposed to do? You need to configure the two VMs with static IP address. These two VMs, VM1 and VM2, on Azure, you need to configure them with static IP addresses. First, let us understand what is a single subnet. If you see this example, these range of IPs are a part of single subnet. Your initial numbers 198.51.100 and here 198.51.100 this belongs to a single subnet okay and from 0 to 255 you can assign them to your devices which can be your laptops or desktops remember whether you are at your home or office each of these devices will have an ip associated with them those can be changing IPs or static IPs. What is a static IP? 
it is simply an address that does not change once you assign this to your device like you assign an IP to this device it remains the same unless this device is decommissioned now first before we answer this question let us understand why do we go with static IPs in a typical cloud implementation now you must have heard this sort of architecture a very small architecture so what this architecture does is you have your web applications on these VMs okay and there are load balancer that are in between the user and the VMs so this load balancer will decide if there are too many number of users it will split the load between VM1 and VM2 but if these IPs of these VMs the IPs of the VMs are not static the load balancer will again and again have to look for a new IP and it will have trouble routing the loads and that is the reason we prefer the VMs to have static IPs now here you need a command which will help you configure the static internal IP address so if we apply the KISS technique that is keep it simple and stupid we will immediately look and match the word static and look if we have static here so we get static here so E is my answer but then people will tell what about these options would you want to explain them first I will show you the documentation because there is nothing logical to this question there are set of commands which are available so this set of commands set as your static vnet ip set as your static vnet ip is available to set the static address information for the virtual machine object we already saw in the diagram we have two virtual machine objects vm1 and vm2 and hence this would work perfectly fine now think about other options i have documented it here as your rmvm you want to create a new virtual machine then you use it as your subnet define the subnet list for azure virtual machines and static vp or vnet ip is what is our answer is and windows network and sharing we use it when we want to share files and printers by someone else or some other computer on the network hence d is wrong as well so we will lock this answer and move forward let's look at question number two you may pause this video here to read this carefully so if you have read this question you will understand that the first line uh, does not have importance okay you can skip that your actual story would start from the second line you have five virtual machines now these virtual machines will have both public and private IP address now what is a public IP address think for a second what is a public IP address so we have the answer it is an address which can be accessed over the internet imagine you have mobile devices at home and you have your internet Wi-Fi connection at home so any device whether it be mobile or uh, laptops or desktops that you use is connected to the internet have you seen this device this is a router at your home this is installed if you have a broadband connection you will have this router this router has a public IP address through which it communicates with the internet so this is how it looks you have your devices that you are using at home and via this router this router this router has public IP address via this router it connects to the internet now 
these mobile devices will have a private IP address. Your router will have a public IP address. That's the difference. These private IP addresses, these are hidden. But these interact, these devices interact with your router, which has a public IP address. And this router interacts with the internet. So we now understand what is a public and a private IP address. What the question says is all of these VMs have both public as well as private IP addresses and they have similar identical security rules inbound and outbound. It has both set of rules, but they are same for all virtual machines. What it means is if I create one NSG, one rule security group, if I create one security group, all these VMs can use this. So what this question is asking is what is the least amount of network interfaces needed for this configuration now again we will have to think and understand what is a network interface that is key for us now now suppose you are at your office and this is you're using a desktop as well as a laptop and this is connected to a network this point of connection interconnection is called network interface and this is where we put the network interface card NIC. So now we understand what is a network interface. So if you have 10 such desktops and laptops, will you use 10 NICs? No, one NIC will suffice because that's a point of interconnection to your network, to your corporate network. Hence, there will be five network interfaces, one for each VM. The network interface will work for both public and private addresses and the inbound and outbound security rules doesn't matter. So it will be something of this sort. We will for each uh, VM, we will have a network interface. And then they, these network interfaces are in turn connected to switches uh, and the typical network kind of stuff. So five is the right answer. I hope you have focused on the concepts explained in this video and the KISS principle that is keep it simple and stupid which will help you understand the questions and answer these in the exam successfully. Please subscribe to my channel and please like my videos that keeps me motivated to put some more similar contents. This channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certification exams primarily heavy on AWS and Azure. This brings us to the end of part one. See you in the next parts. I will leave you with a quote which is from the life of Usain Bolt.